Bibles with me to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah at chapter number 4. Verses 1 through verse number 12. Nehemiah at chapter number 4. Commencing with verse 1 through verse 12. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them and day and night because of them. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst of, among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, from all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Do the best you can with what you have where you are. Those of us who read the Bible will know that Nehemiah goes before the king to take leave of his position as cupbearer because he has gotten news from the homeland that the walls are down and the gates have been burned with fire. The city is in ruin. Rubbish is everywhere. And without walls, there are no defenses. Without gates, without walls, there's no, there's no security. And so Nehemiah leaves a comfortable position as cupbearer to King Artaxerxes to go to his homeland in Jerusalem to undertake the arduous task of rebuilding Jerusalem's walls. And when they get there, the situation is worse than when he first deemed. And now they undertake the responsibility of building the sheep gate and the dung gate and the fountain gate 
and bricklayers and masons, coppersmiths and goldsmiths, people who work with metal, people who work with wood, people who work with iron, came and put their hands to the work. And people who were not able or skilled in any particular craft showed up to hand them what they needed. They were not bricklayers, but they could hand a brick. They were not goldsmiths, but they could hand the gold. They were not skilled in any particular laborious craft, but they were there to lend their support because if I can't do it, I can help it to get done. That's a good attitude. Somebody ought to help me preach here. That's a good attitude to have at the church. I can't sing, but I can shout when somebody else sings. I, I don't have to be preaching to say amen. I don't have to teach the class to give support. Come on, talk back to me if you can. Whatever your place in the body of Christ, don't try to take somebody else's place. Just do the best you can with what you have where you are. Nehemiah, Nehemiah and his men are engaged in a serious work. In fact, the future of Jerusalem and the future of Israel depends on the successful completion of their task. As they labor, they provide a valuable illustration for those of us who are working in the Lord's church today. The future of Lily Grove is at stake. The future of this community is at stake. I was listening on the news uh, to those protesters uh, when they were up in arms about them closing Jones High School and uh, some other schools that HISD is considering uh, closing and consolidating in the, in the neighborhood, in the African-American community. And uh, some of the community protesters' claims were that uh, when you close down a school, you close down a community. I thought about that in preparation for this preaching this morning. Uh, not, not, not only is that true in a, in a small scale kind of way, but what would happen if this church disappeared? Or would anybody notice if this church disappeared? I wish I had my 730 crowd. What would happen if Lily Grove disappeared off this corner or would the world notice that this church is gone? What, what kind of an impact are we making on this community or are we making an impact at all? That's an individual question for the corporate body of Christ. Each one of you as an individual, what contribution are you making that if this church disappears, the community would notice it? Got kind of quiet right there. Uh, I, I want you to hear me, brothers and sisters. When, when, when I stand before God, and surrender my commission. God is not going to judge me by what you did. He's going to judge me by what talents and gifts he gave me. For the upbuilding and the ongoing of his kingdom. So while I have a chance. I'm going to give God the best work that I have. The best preaching that I have. The best hallelujah that I have. The best amen that I have. The best thank you Jesus that I have. Nobody in this church is going to outshout me. You are not going to outgive me. You are not going to outpraise me because I've got so much to be grateful for 
that I want to give God my very best because on the cross he gave me his very best. And so I praise God with excitement. I praise God with a loud voice. I praise God with upraised hands. I praise God with enthusiastic excitement because I want to give God my best. Now, 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 hear me. If you don't want to get on the wall, I will not let your reluctance stop me from taking my place. Because I got work to do. I wish I had somebody to help me here. The people had a mind to work. And when you have a mind to work, God will give you the tools you need. Now, 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 let me... Let me, let me help some scared Christian in here today. Uh, let me help some nervous believer in here today who think that this work is for sissies. Uh, this, this work is not for the weak and the squeamish and the nervous among us because Nehemiah told him, put a tool in one hand. Somebody ought to help me. And put a weapon in the other hand. So when you need to work, use your tool. And when you need to bust somebody upside the head, use your weapon. Because there are some folk who respond to the Bible. And there are some folk you just got to hit side the head. If the men in this church would walk down the street with a weapon in our hand, we can close these crack houses. We can get these dope dealers off the corner in this community if the men would get a tool and a weapon. Your tool is the word of God. Oh, but you ought to have uh, something else for folk who won't hear the Bible. Now, I don't have time to go into all of that, but use your imagination. You need some folk in the church who don't mind fighting. I'm, I'm not talking about fighting with words. I'm talking about physically getting in the dust with somebody and say, what you say about my church? What you say about my pastor? You better shut your mouth. I wish I had somebody to help me here. And there are some women who are not scared to stand up in somebody's face and say, say it again. We need strong people in the body of Christ with a tool and a weapon. Some of you right here kind of quiet and, and nervous. But I got some hoodlums on this side and, and, and two or three gangsters right here in the front and, and four or five ex-cons right over there who the Lord has saved, pulled off the streets, sanctified and forgave, and they say, for God I live, and for God, I'm ready to die. Is there anybody here? I said, is there anybody here willing to put your all on the line because God put it all on the line for you? Yeah. Yeah. Whenever you get ready to work for the Lord, you have to recognize the dangers that are around you. Uh, verses one through verse number three. 
says they have to fight criticism. They have to fight criticism. Sandballot and Tobiah ain't dead. Sandballot and Tobiah show up every Sunday morning. And all they do is criticize. Uh, Dale Carnegie says in his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, any fool can criticize, condemn, and complain, and most of them do. You're going to get that on your way to Lubis. Let me run that by you one more time. Any fool can criticize, condemn, and complain, and most of them do. Have you ever noticed that the church is the only army that wounds its own soldiers? You ain't been talked about till you've been talked about at the church. You haven't been lied on and criticized until you've been hurt at the church. And not because you're doing anything wrong, because you came out of the world to come in the church thinking you were going to meet people to encourage you. But most times, the people at the church, all they have for you is criticism. Uh, not only did they have to fight criticism, but they had to fight conspiracy. Sanballat and Tobiah got together with the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Astadites to conspire to bring down the walls from the outside. Tobiah says, don't, don't, don't worry about what they're doing. It ain't, it ain't gonna come to nothing. A fox will get on top of it and bring it down. You notice that from the outside, people who don't know nothing about the church are always talking about what the church ought to be doing. Now, if you want to burn me up, you let somebody who don't go to church tell me what the church ought to be doing. Listen, I don't, I don't argue child rearing with people who don't have children. If you don't have any children, don't argue with me about raising children. I don't argue politics with people who don't vote. If you don't vote, you're not even a citizen. You ain't got no business. To, what are you doing talking to me? You're not even alive. You're not even a citizen. And if you don't go to church, you certainly have no business talking to me about what the church ought to be doing. Because you have no sense of what the church ought to be doing if you're not a part of the body of Christ. You are on the outside and you need to come in. The only folk who can criticize the church or have something to say about what the church is not doing is folk who are in the church trying to get it done. But notice this. People who complain don't want to solve no problem. They just want to complain. Talk back to me if you can. Now, not only does the conflict and the criticism come from the outside, but complaints also come from the inside. Now, I expect folk outside to pull me down. I expect folk outside to criticize me. I expect folk on the outside to lie on me and to try to pull the rug from under me. But in the church, we are brothers and sisters. Have I got a witness here? We are family in the body of Christ. And family fall out with each other in the house. I, I, I need about 10 people who was raised like I was raised. Uh, you remember uh, something would go on in our family. And we would talk about it and, and fight over it in the house. 
And then my mama would say, don't you take what goes on in this house. I wish I had one or two more witnesses and bring it out in the street. In the house, we would cut each other up. But outside the house, nobody else knew what was going on. And if they knew, they better not bring it up because this is between family. Uh, there were 10 of us in my family, eight boys, two girls. And every time school started, my daddy would give us a speech because the schools had just integrated. And my daddy would tell us, if them children hit you, don't hit nobody, you go tell the teacher. You go tell the principal. I don't want you to get in no trouble. My daddy would take a nap every Sunday after church, after he ate his lunch after church. He'd go to bed and take a nap. But just before he went to take his nap, he would give us his going back to school speech tomorrow. Uh, Y'all behave yourself. You carrying my name. Uh, remember who you are. Don't go out there fighting. Somebody hit you, 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 you talk to the principal. You tell the teacher. And on his way to take his nap, my mama said, you heard what your daddy just said? Don't pay attention to none of that. Somebody hit you? <laughs> I wish I had a witness here. And if somebody jump on one of y'all, everybody better get in that fight. And if you don't fight, when you get home, you're going to have to fight me. Can I help somebody this morning? That's the way we ought to carry on at the church. We are each other's keeper. Have I got a witness here? The strong have to bear the infirmities of the weak. We fight for one another because we are brothers and sisters. We don't tear each other down, but we build each other up. Uh, listen here. Listen, listen. Here's a word. Here's a word. Here's a word of advice for all the complainers at Lily Grove. Here's a word for the complainers in this church. The man or woman who says it can't be done should never interrupt those who are actually doing it. Can I say that one more time? I like, I, I enjoyed writing that down. The man or woman who says it can't be done should never interrupt the people who are actually doing it. God is up to something at this church. God is up to something on this corner. And he's not going to get it done with those who whine and complain. Folk who whine and complain should never set your agenda. Because God is trying to get something accomplished through this church. If the people have a mind to work. They recognize the dangers around them. But as I heard to the close, they rely on the deity above them. When the task got hard, when the road got rough, here's what the leaders of Israel did. They prayed. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't call a committee meeting because you know we Baptists like to call a committee meeting. Uh, they, they, didn't, they, they, they didn't get a quorum together. Uh, they didn't have any uh, jam session talking about what do we need to do. They got on their knees and prayed. You're going to help me close this, won't you? Because they believed that what they were doing was the will of God. And when you're doing the will of God, you can't do God's work unless you bathe it, baptize it in prayer. I wish I had some noise right here. God is moving on this corner because the leaders of this church came together and prayed. Uh, uh, when we were getting ready to uh, to, to, to put all of this together, to build this new sanctuary to the glory of God. And I want you to hear this, brothers and sisters. It's not about money. Because God does not need your money. 
Everything God needs, he already has. The cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord. It's nothing you can bring God that God doesn't need. But God needs you to cooperate with him to get done what he wants to get done on this corner, in this city, in this community. And if you don't do it, that does not mean it won't get done. Because God has a bullpen. Let me see if I can get with this a minute. Uh, indulge me for just a minute. Uh, I am a baseball fan. Uh, I, the, the, the Astros ain't doing nothing, but I'm still a, a baseball fan. Uh, I live in Houston, and every once in a while, I go to, to Minute Maid because I am an Astros fan. Uh, I, I'm not a, I don't care that much about football. Basketball doesn't excite me that much. I am a baseball fan. Uh, I, I grew up on hearing my grandmother talk about Jackie Robinson and and, and they were talking about Satchel Paige and the Negro League. And, and uh, my mother would listen to baseball on the radio while we were in the car. She'd watch it on television when we sit in the house. My uncles all enjoyed baseball. So I'm a baseball fan. And one of the things that's exciting and attractive to me about baseball and the spring season and when they start baseball and when they get into the World Series and all of that, sometimes the pitcher on the mound is not uh, really throwing in his strikes. He's walking players and, and he's messing up on the mound. And then the manager leaves the dugout and goes to the mound and uh, the catcher gets from behind where he's catching and they run up to the mound and talk with the pitcher. I can't hear them, but I imagine that uh, the manager is saying, now listen, you're throwing too many balls. Get your act together. Then the manager goes back to the dugout and the pitcher starts again and then he's messing up again. But the manager doesn't go to the mound this time. He goes to the bullpen. Because in the bullpen is another pitcher warming up, getting ready to take his place on the mound. You're going to help me close this, won't you? God has a bullpen and whenever one person goes God sends in a substitute I need two or three believers right here Adam goes but Abraham comes Abraham goes but Jacob comes Jacob goes but Joseph comes Joseph goes Moses comes Moses goes Joshua comes. Joshua goes. Gideon comes. Gideon goes. Samson comes. Somebody ought to help me preach it. Samson goes. David comes. David goes. Solomon comes. Solomon goes. Jeremiah comes. Jeremiah goes. Ezekiel comes. Ezekiel goes. Isaiah comes. Isaiah goes, Daniel comes, Daniel goes, Amos comes, Amos goes, Obadiah comes, Obadiah goes, Micah comes, Micah goes, Nahum comes, Nahum goes, Zechariah comes, Zechariah goes, Malachi comes, Malachi goes, John the Baptist comes. John the Baptist goes, Jesus comes. Jesus goes, Paul comes. Paul goes, John comes. John goes, Norris Terry comes. Norris Terry goes, Willie Powell comes. Willie Powell goes, Curtis Wallace comes. Curtis Wallace goes, Terry Anderson comes. And when Terry Anderson goes, God's got somebody in the bullpen warming up. Getting ready to take my place. But listen, I don't want nobody 
taking my place while I'm on the mound. I, I, don't, I, I don't want nobody taking my place while I'm on the mound. Because while I'm on the mound, I'm going to give God my very best. Have I got a witness here? I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm going to pray when the Spirit says pray. Because I can't do what God wants me to do unless I bathe it and baptize it in prayer. Now I need some prayer warrior right here now. You may not be able to do what somebody else can do, but you can pray that it gets done. Have I got a witness here? You can pray for the people in the leadership. You can pray for those who are trying to give God their best. And when you give God your best, that's all that the Lord requires of you. Let them complain. Let them criticize you. Let them stand on the sideline. You just get in the game and give God your 100%. And I need somebody here who's giving God everything you can. I'm not talking about money now. I'm talking about you giving God your mind. You're giving God your heart. You're giving God your spirit. And people have been depending on you in your family. Because you've been the strong one in your family. But now your strength is getting weak. Now your strength is waning and faltering. But just like God bless you in the situation, God can bless you to come out of the situation. And when you come out of what you've been going through, don't act like you made it by yourself, but come on up to the Lord's house and tell God thank you for my tool and my weapon. Thank you that I can watch, fight, and pray. I wish I had a witness here. I can still hear my elders saying, if you pray and pray right, God will hear and answer your prayer. I need somebody that God has been taking care of. I need somebody here that God has been watching over. God's been looking out for you. You lost your job, but you didn't lose your mind. You didn't lose your joy. You didn't lose your peace. Because God's been looking out for you. When you cried, he was right there to wipe tears from your eyes. When you got lonely, he was right there to be a friend that sticks closer than your brother. Is there anybody here come through the valley? of the shadow of death and God has been on your side if the Lord opened doors for you help me praise his name if the Lord put food on your table clothes on your back made a way out of no way and you don't mind testifying if you prayed and God answered your prayer now is the time this is the place for you to tell God thank you for all you've done for me I need a witness here who's not embarrassed to testify who's not ashamed to let somebody know it was nobody but Jesus nobody but the Lord if you know it was nobody but Jesus, if you know it was nobody but the Lord, why don't you grab somebody, find you a neighbor now who knows how to praise the Lord, who knows how to shout hallelujah, who's not embarrassed to testify. And both of y'all together now say to one another, it was nobody but Jesus, nobody but the Lord. He brought me from a mighty long way. He kept me. I know he's all right.
if nobody else wants to work, don't let that stop you. If nobody else wants to praise, don't let that hinder you. If nobody else wants to shout hallelujah, don't let that intimidate you. Come on, help me say it now. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. In other words, if you don't want to shout, I will. If you don't want to lift your hand, I will. If you don't want to tell him thank you, I will. I will. I will. I know he's all right. I thank God that he allows me to be a part of the moving ministry of Lily Grove Church. Because when you and I are off the scene, our children, our grandchildren are going to have some place to worship. We're going to have somewhere to praise God because the people had a mind to work. And listen, the workers of brass didn't bother the folk who worked with copper. The folk who worked with copper didn't get in the way of the folk who worked with gold. The folk who were bricklayers didn't bother with the people who worked with wood paneling. Everybody got in their place. And when you read chapter 3, so-and-so repaired his wall. Then so-and-so repaired his wall. And then everybody put their shoulder to the work and repaired their part of the wall so that there was no breach in the wall because the people had a mind to work. And when you put your mind to it, when you put your heart to it, and when you bathe it and baptize it in prayer, God will empower it for his glory and for his honor. 